morning everybody welcome to project number two for my uh, July design team projects for country craft creation um, I hope that you enjoyed the first video and I think you're gonna like this one too I'm going to show you how to make the vacation passport holder that I created to go along with the journey album that I made with the let's travel collection by Cartabella this paper is available at Country Craft Creations, and it's wonderful to work with. It's so pretty, and the colors are vibrant, and I just loved it. I paired it with the um, artisan card stock that's denim. Um, that's the name of it. So um, go ahead and go on over to Country Craft Creations and get your supplies ready, because I'm going to show you how to make this passport holder. Now, this the passport holder was really cool because... It was a kind of an all-purpose thing. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. And then I got to thinking about it um, while I was designing it. And I was like, you could use this for passports, which is what I intended it for. But you could also use it um, if you use Christmas paper. It would make a great Christmas planner, receipt holder, note holder, kind of a catch-all for Christmas planning. It could be used for all kinds of different things. So uh, let's get started on the tutorial. And I'll show you how to make it. It's really actually... Um, quite simple to put together. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that the paper again is Let's Travel by Cartabella and in the previous video at least on my notes I kept writing Let's Adventure so if I said that I apologize I totally got the name messed up on my notes so if I said it in the video and I missed it in the editing I apologize. Um, it's called Let's Travel and it's a wonderful line. All right so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to make our covers just uh, like we always do. And of course, as I got ready, I need to get my tape out. So I'm gonna use a little bit of score tape on this. Um, so what you're gonna need for the covers are two pieces of card, or chipboard, excuse me, that measure eight and a half by four and a half. So eight and a half by four and a half, you need two of those. And then you need a piece that is one by eight and a half. All right, I've already, put score tape on the back. Um, these are from eight and a half by 11 sheets that you can buy from Country Craft Creations as well. And um, so you're gonna need that. And then, let me see here, I'm just double checking. So when I cut the cardstock out, the cardstock measures 12 by 10, I believe it is. Yeah, 12 by 10. What this is going to do is it's going to give you a three um, quarter inch border all the way around when you put your papers down. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to line this up. And then when you put it down at three quarters of an inch, you're going to have plenty of space to do this okay with your quarter inch binding so um, there we have that so let's go ahead and take the score tape off if I can get my fingers to work we shall do that okay so lining it up on your cardstock we're gonna lay this down and you're gonna end up with a three quarter inch border all the way around your paper. So then once you put this first piece down, we're going to use our score tape. We're gonna make that quarter inch space between our elements, which will assist in page, uh, or excuse me, the cover turning properly and enough room so where the paper's not bent so that it tears, which you don't have a problem with that if you get this cardisan, artisan card stock. Can't talk today. It's still pretty early where I am. So then, let's see, we'll do it again. We're gonna do it again. All right, and then, one more time. Center that down nice. Maybe if I can do it today. There 
we go. Okay. So then what you're going to also want to do is grab your, I have like three different bone folders that I use for my projects. I have this big wide one um, for this kind of thing. I have the one that I like to score with, and then I have the one that I like to use when I'm making covers because it doesn't have quite a sharp edge and it's nicer. So <laughs> if you see me using several different bone folders, that's why. Um, because they, I actually have favorite purposes for all of them. So then, um, if you didn't see the first video, um, or even if you did, we'll repeat what I do. I score on the right side of the project to help tease my edges and, and get my paper trained to where I want it to go. So here you, you can feel the edge of the chipboard on the cardstock on the outside. So I just gently feel that with my finger and then I gently run my bone folder down the sides. So this is training the paper to go in the direction that I really want it to go into. So I do that all the way around and you just do it gentle and you'll get a nice trained paper. Okay. So all the way around. So that's the next step that I do after I put my chipboard down. Ooh, mercy, it is hot in my house today. And I even have the AC on and it's still not working. And today's only supposed to get to like 70 something. It's not gonna be that hot. It's gonna be in the low 70s today. But I'm already way too hot. All right, so I have my paper trained in the direction that I want it to go. And then I kind of give it a little or tug on the or tug, I don't know, um, a little push on the table, I guess. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the score tape out or the, you know, the lining of the score tape off of the middle there. Oops, and I left a piece. Where is my pick? Where's my pick? I found these great tools at Harbor Freight and they are wonderful. Um, very sharp, but they're wonderful for picking things out in small areas. So if you have a Harbor Freight in your area, I forget what they're called, but they came in a big pack and they're wonderful. I love them. So, all right. So the other thing that I like to do is um, I take the tape off of here. And then when I get to this point, I kind of nudge the score tape into that divot space between the chipboard to get the score tape to set nice in there. And that tends to help me get the paper in there when it comes time to folding these edges over. All right, do that. And then we'll do around the outsides. And you guys are gonna see my fingernail nudge technique again on how I wrap the corners without um, having any of the chipboard show. And I love, I love using score tape. I do love score tape. I use Artisan, um, or not Artisan, I use the um, Art Glitter Glue um, as well. I like glue too, and it, and it works really, really well, but I also love score tape. I love the fact that you can rip it, so. <laughs> All right, so let's make sure that's down real good. Get in the little crevices there. All right. And then the next thing I am going to do is I'm just gonna take my scissors and you're going to want to make sure you have about an eighth of an inch space between the corner of your chipboard and uh, the edge of your cardstock when you cut it off because what we're going to do is we're going to just miter these corners at a rough uh, 45 degree angle okay you want at least an eighth of an inch space there if it's a little bit more that's fine and it doesn't have to be super exact um, because we are going to cover the insides anyway um, but that is how I do my chipboard and then take off all this stuff and when I wrap my chipboard I always have this little mantra in my head top bottom side to side so we're going to go ahead and just push this over and down for the initial stick 
And then we're going to go ahead and just grab that and make sure that it sticks really well. And then on the corners here, I'm going to just take my fingernail and I'm just going to nudge that in there. So I will nudge that and show you what that looks like. Hopefully you can see it well. Okay. And so that kind of covers the corner. It pushes the paper in and around the corner. And then when you fold that over and nudge it, let's see, you should get a nice coverage and it looks really, really clean. Okay. So again, do the nudge. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So that part is done and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tease the paper into that space nice and gentle. This is the bone folder I like to use because it's not quite as sharp as my scoring one. This one I feel like is too dull to use on my scoreboard but it works really well for this so okay so I got that part and then the inner spine cover, we're just gonna put over here and it measures four by eight and three eighths. Okay, so that's gonna cover that. And of course, I didn't cover that with score tape. So I'm gonna pause this for a second. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back and I went ahead and I covered with some score tape the back of my inner spine binding and we're just gonna center that because remember it is going to get covered up with patterned paper so it doesn't have to be super precise as far as centering it side to side but top to bottom it's going to give you about an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom okay put that down and then oh, wrong one let's do this okay so then go ahead and I'm gonna gently fold that and then i'm gonna put my bone folder in there and make sure that it gets a good stick in here. And in here. Okay. Just like that. All right, that should be pretty good. We'll give it a little gentle movement, get it ready to do what we want it to do. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. All right, so now that we've done that, now that we've done that, we're gonna work on getting this side of the cover done. So the left side of the cover is going to actually be your passport holder and some additional pockets. So let's start with the, what I'm calling the inner tall pocket. The inner tall pocket, bang, measures four and three quarters by eight and a half. And I've already kind of prepared this, but we are gonna go through it. So four and three quarters by eight and a half is what that pocket measures. And we're gonna take, put it on our scoreboard and we're going to do a score at half an inch and then we're going to turn it and then we're going to score it at eight inches and then we're going to use a corner rounder of your choice and punch it, which I already did, okay? So once that is done, then, actually let's do all the pieces first and then let's put them all together. Let's do that, okay? So we did this one. This is the left inner tall pocket. The next piece we're going to need is the left side middle pocket. And this one measures three and a half by five and a quarter. And this guy, when you put it in your scoreboard, the only thing you're gonna have to do to this guy is um, score at, excuse me, half an inch and at four and three quarter. Okay, so half an inch and four and three quarter. That's all we're gonna have to do with that guy. 
The next piece is the passport pocket. And we're gonna do a few scores on here because we're gonna do some uh, work on this one. Okay, so this piece, the passport pocket measures four by seven and a quarter. Don't you just love post-it notes? So when you put it in your scoreboard on the seven and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score it half, one, and one and a half, and then you're gonna come down to five and three quarter, six and a quarter, and six and three quarters. Okay, so again, since there's a lot, half, one, and one and a half, and then five and a quarter, or five and three quarters, excuse me, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, six and three quarters. And then we're gonna turn it, and you're gonna do one score at three and a half. Okay, that's all you're gonna need for that piece. And then the flap for the passport pocket is six by four and a half. Okay, so six by four and a half. And the only thing you're gonna need to do to this one is put it in your scoreboard and score it at five and a half. So one, one score line at five and a half. And then I took my corner rounder and I rounded the corners there. Okay, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this guy really quick. We're going to do some work. Okay, so for the left inner tall pocket, these are going to, the hint, the actual binding pieces that I'm putting the score tape on right now are going to get covered with patterned paper. Um, so I'm not going to get too crazy about going to the edge here. Um, because it's going to get covered up anyway. The way that these pockets are made, pieces of paper are going to show through, so you don't need to worry about that too awful much. But you are going to want to miter your corners. Like that. Okay? So that piece is done, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to fold and burnish okay then that piece will be ready and then this guy I'll put these on as we're going this guy is going to set on the edge right to the edge on the side and the bottom like that okay so we'll go ahead and take our tape off and I'm going to line it up just like so. Okay. And then just stick a bone folder or whatever you have that's long in there and just make sure it has a good stick. Okay. So that pocket is done, the left inner tall pocket. So then the next thing you're going to want to do is the left side middle pocket. And this piece is really super simple. Um, it's one of those kind of uh, tucked pockets or layered pockets. Um, so we're gonna just put our score tape on. I'm gonna fold and burnish really well. And then we're gonna grab our pocket and on this one, so here's the bottom of the book, we're gonna measure three inches up from the bottom, and that's where the bottom of that pocket is gonna sit, okay? So if you need to, you can make a mark, or you can just lay your ruler on there and line it up to the side. Whoops, if you take the tape off first, it sticks better. Just so you know. <laughs> so now we have that pocket there. Okay, next piece. So this one we're gonna do some work on. This is the passport pocket. And this is um, based on the expanding pocket that I made in my journey album. So if um, you remember the journey album, let me grab that real quick. The expanding pockets have a lot of um, give so that you could put things in them. So I designed this pocket the same exact way. 
So that's why we did all the scores. So again, we're going to, let's put some score tape on first. And a lot of times I like to do that so that when I miter, I actually get the score tape where the corners meet nice and good. All right, so there's that. We're gonna make some cuts. So this one we're gonna cut a little bit sharply so that when we fold it, they don't show on, this, on the front part. And then we're gonna take and we're gonna cut the two pieces out here, not quite as sharp. So you have a piece that looks like that. Okay, didn't quite get that cut. There we go. Okay, so then we're gonna fold. Like that. Like that. And then we're gonna turn over and do that and burnish that. Same thing on the other side. And this passport pocket, just so that you know, I looked it up and passports generally in US terms are almost just shy of five inches tall by three and a half inches wide. So I created the pocket so that it would more than adequately fit this. Now you can use glue for this. You can use score tape for this. On my Journey album, I use lots of art glitter glue. On this one, I'm gonna show you that you can use score tape as well. So we're gonna do that. And score tape, again, is also available at Country Craft Creations, so whichever one you prefer. And that's gonna line up at the bottom and fit right on over this tucked pocket. Okay, so now you have all three of those pockets created. The last thing we're gonna need to do for this side is the flap. And again, we're gonna use a little score tape on here. We're gonna cut the corners, miter them I should say. So you got that. We've already rounded the corners. Gonna fold that, burnish. And then this guy is going to fit right at the edge of this middle tucked pocket. Okay, now that's where that guy's gonna go. So I'll turn my book over because it'll be easier for me to see it. And just line that up and press down. And voila, you have a pocket for your passport. You have a tucked pocket here, and then you have a big open pocket here. So the other thing we're going to do is this has a magnet closure. So I'm going to grab, I used, ow, I used a large magnet. These things are wonderful, but they are so hard to get out of the package sometimes. Okay. So let's get our magnet on there. Okay, like so. There we go. All right, magnet on. So I'm just going to do that, and we should be good to go. All right, so let me grab the middle page here, and I will we'll go ahead and work on the middle page. Let's see here. Yeah. Middle page section is right here. And just double check. I want to make sure that I'm trying to be a good girl and not have any oopsies. So, okay. So, 
first thing for the middle page is what we're going to do is we're going to grab a piece of paper that is eight and a half by eight and three quarters. Okay. Or no, eight and a half by eight and three eighths. Excuse me. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. So eight and three eighths wide, eight and a half tall. All right. Eight and three eighths wide by eight and a half tall. See, I was so worried about oopsies that I made one. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to score this to create the pages and the binding. So we're going to score on the eight and three eighths inch mark. Is that right? I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to double check something real quick. I just don't want to mess okay, this up. Okay, so for the middle page of this book, we are going to need a piece of cardstock that measures 9 inches by 8 and 3 eighths. Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to put it on the 9 inch mark up top here, and we're going to score it at 4 and a quarter. And then we're going to turn it completely over. And you can score it at four and a quarter again. Or you can just score it all at once at four and a quarter by four and three quarters. Okay, so what is that essentially is going to give you is a half inch gusset. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to fold. and burnish and then do it again. This is going to be your middle page to your book. All right. So this is going to fit right in the middle of your spine. Okay. And we're going to put some pockets in there. And so you're going to want it centered about in the middle. And when I looked at the ruler, and I'm going to make sure I get this measurements right, it gives you about three eighths of an inch on either side front and back. Is that right? No, that's not right. It gives you a quarter of an inch. Good gravy. What is my brain doing today? Okay, so <laughs> quarter of an inch. About quarter of an inch. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to measure about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put a little mark. Make sure that looks correct and it does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to fold it so that when I glue it down here, I can lay it nice and flat and get a good burnish on it. And then I'm going, or a good uh, seal on it. And I'm going to get my art glitter glue for this and put my art glitter glue on. And then we're going to glue it down. There is my mark, and you're going to line it up with the, the um, edges of the spine covering. That'll give you the mark on the bottom, the kind of the uh, guideline for the bottom, okay? Okay. All right, that's going to give you your middle page. And we're going to build some pockets on the middle page here. Okay. That looks good. So let's put this aside for just a second. Let's make some pockets for our middle page. So there's going to be four pieces that you're going to need. You're going to need two for the small pocket, and you're going to need two for the, the larger pockets. Okay. So the small pocket for the middle pages measure three and a half by four and a half. And you're going to take and you're going to, you're going to do them opposite. So one of them you're going to score at half an inch and then you're going to turn it and score at three. So you will have the scores on the left hand side for the side part. And on the other one, you're going to put it in and you're going to score it at four. So just the opposite. And then the bottom score will be 
at three. Okay? So that'll be on the right-hand side, that half-inch score. Then you're going to have the larger pocket. And the larger pocket is going to be the same thing. So um, you're going to have one scored opposite of the other. And basically, the only score you're going to need is at a half an inch. So, um, well, I guess you don't have to because there's no bottom. So score it at four. Here, it gives you half an inch. One of them is going to be for one side, and one of them will be turned for the other side. Okay? I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my brain, but sometimes, you know, my brain doesn't. <laughs> sometimes my brain is being silly. All right, so then we're going to take our pages, and we're going to round some corners. So this one's going to be for the left side. Or excuse me, no, that one's going to be for the right side. This one's going to be for the left side. It'll make sense in just a second. Let's just round our corners. And this one here is going to go this way. I'm kind of looking at my notes just to make sure I don't get it wonky on you. Like that, okay? And we're gonna grab our tape. And again, these are gonna be covered with patterned paper. Because I like, I like when the bindings are covered with patterned paper because that way when you put things in the pockets, they don't catch on those things. I know that there is a trick with the scotch tape, which I just learned watching some of these crafty, wonderful ladies. Um, and I haven't used it a whole lot because I just learned it and, and quite frankly, I haven't got it into my plan yet. But you can do that. You can cover the edges with scotch tape. And then um, when you slide your uh, things in, um, they won't get caught. But I also like covering them with patterned paper too. And on this particular part, this will be important because a lot of the pockets are going to show. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the um, first thing I'm going to do is the bottom pocket. And we totally need to do this real quick. And then we need to miter our corners. So we'll do that. Okay. Ah. Okay. So the way that I am designing this, I would like to have one pocket Kind of open one way and the other pocket open the other way so I'm gonna put this one in first because I don't want it to catch on this pocket and you'll see what I mean in a second so we're gonna take our little pocket and we're going to put it at the bottom of the page line it up totally to the bottom and to the side of that page and then we're gonna take the bigger pocket and it's gonna open the opposite direction of the bottom pocket and we're going to sneak it in there and it's going to cover that binding for the small pocket a little bit so that's why you didn't want to put this one in first because you didn't want to tack it down so that's that's why you have to go to this order and then you're going to stick it in there you're going to nudge it up to the bottom of that pocket and you're going to line it up just before the score and stick that guy down so now we have a pocket here and then we have an open pocket here, okay? It's closed on this bottom side, okay? And then some of your pretty pattern paper is gonna show through the side. It's gonna look really cool. So we're gonna do the same thing on the next side. So let's do that. This um, passport holder is super easy to put together if you know, you don't have me talking. <laughs> it's really simple. Uh, still nervous. First time doing the design team. It's going to get better, I promise. So, mitering all my corners. And 
We're going to put the small pocket down first. Lining that up. Beautiful. And then take your side piece. And again, we're going to nudge it in all the way. And we're going to line it up to the score. Like so. And there you have it. So, two pockets. Where is a piece of paper? Quickie, small piece of paper. Small-ish piece of paper. Here's a piece of scrap paper. So you have two pockets that are going to open like that. And then you have a pocket that opens like this. Goes all the way down on each side. I intentionally left these blank because I thought these would be great places for pictures. All right. Let's work on the back page. Let me grab my gear for that. And do, 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 do. there's that. All right. So we're going to have um, two pockets and a flap. And my idea for this was to be able to put a notebook in here so you could take notes or use it for receipts, whatever you wanted to put in here. But it's going to be um, a different kind of pocket. It's going to be open to the side. So we're going to grab our pieces. And let's grab our scoreboard and get that ready. I did not pre-score these, so we're going to do it right now. Pretty simple to do this. Let me just double check my notes because I really don't want to mess it up for you. All right, so we have our small pocket, which will measure two and a half inches by nine and a half. Okay. And that pocket is going to get scored at half an inch on either end. Half an inch on either end. And then we're going to turn it, and on the two and a half inch side, we're going to score it again at half an inch. For the larger pocket, we're only going to do two scores. The larger pocket is three by nine and a half. And we're going to score at half an inch on either end. Okay. And then we have our flap that's going to cover everything. And that measures four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay. Four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And when you put it in here, you're going to score at half an inch so that we can stick it to the book. All right. Now this is this piece right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a corner rounding on it with the one I've been using for the rest of the book. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's get rid of this. Let's grab our book. So it doesn't really matter if you do the pockets first or the flap first, but I'm going to do the pockets first because that way I um, that way I won't have it in my way. Okay, so let's put our score tape on. And this pocket here, um, I did it a little bit different, and I'll show you in a second how I attached it because you kind of have to attach it together. So put on our score tape, miter our corners. Okay, and then the other pocket here. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm <laughs> I think I've had too much coffee today too. So that does tend to help, doesn't it? I got up this morning got my husband off to work, got my housework done, and now I get to play. All right, so, and then later I'm gonna go get my hair done, so, woohoo! <laughs> All right, put some score tape on that. We're gonna miter corners. Like that. 
Okay. Do that. And then we're gonna do that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our bottom pocket and we're only gonna take the, um, or the skinny pocket, the little pocket, and we're gonna take and take the tape off only the bottom part and we're gonna line it up. It goes the full length of your book. So right to the edge of your cover, you're gonna wanna do that. Okay, and then we're gonna take our bigger pocket Take the tape off the sides and we're going to line that right up over top right to the score line and to the tops of the book we're going to stick that down so that's going to give you that pocket and when we fold this up that will be the closure for that pocket saves a little bit of chips or uh, cardstock if you do it that way and it also saves a little bit of the bulk on the bottom. So then I'm gonna fold that up and over, and then that creates the small pocket, and that creates the large pocket. I'm calling it the large pocket. Okay, so then your flap, pretty simple to put this on. Put my score tape on like that. And then we're going to go and do that. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to burnish it. And this guy is simply going to go right to the edge of the fold of your book. And it is a little bit smaller. I did it smaller on purpose. It's going to measure to just inside the um, crease for your fold of your book. So you don't want it in the crease. Make sure you don't get it in the crease. You want it outside, you know, right on the edge of the crease so that when you fold your book, it doesn't hinder the pocket. Okay, so there you have that. And then we're going to grab one more magnet. So this project only requires two magnets. If I can get it out of the thing, of course. There we go. And I'm gonna put that guy like right there. And hopefully Okay, magnet on. Okay, there you go. So we have the base of our book done. So the base of our passport book is done. It's a great size, so this will fit really nice in a purse or your travel bag um, to carry documents, to carry your passport, to carry hotel reservations, tickets, whatever you have that you um, have pre-purchased. So we have our passport pocket, keep it nice and safe in there. You have a pocket, I'm gonna throw that. We have a pocket here that goes all the way to the bottom, so carry long tickets and things, So and another pocket here. When you open this guy up, each side has a pocket there and a pocket here both sides and then you have your envelope where you could keep other documents that you want to keep a little more protected in a pocket or you could put a notebook in here um, carry receipts uh, even money if you so chose so um, there's that so let's real quick talk about the closure I'm gonna grab a couple things and then I will be right back Okay, let's talk the closure of the album. So I wanted something that wasn't gonna be too bulky, that would get caught up in your purse too badly. You know, um, I was thinking about a ribbon closure with a big bow and everything, but then I thought, nah, that's gonna be too, um, too bulky for a purse and could get caught up on things, especially if you're traveling and stuff like that. So I wanted something somewhat simple to do. 
So what I ended up um, coming up with was um, the string closure. So on the back of the album, and again, make sure it is the back of the album, I measured about, or you know, in the middle, and put a little piece of score tape there. And then I took, I have some uh, twine that um, was in my stash, and I thought this would be perfect. And I just laid that on the top there to help secure it. And then the back of the album um, cover with the pattern paper. And then that will also help secure that down. And for this, I'm going to use my art glitter glue. And then we're just going to center that on the book like so. And then make sure you can open your book to the halfway mark so you can put it down really nice and get a good um, surface so that you can make sure it adheres down really good. Okay, because we really want that to stick around the string, okay? So just like that. And just real quick, the measurements for the covers for the pattern paper that I used are 4 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths, okay? So that's the back part. So we want the string to wrap from the back to the front, okay? So then the front cover, before we stick in that down or do anything to that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a button closure, okay? So I just grabbed a little piece of uh, scrapped cardstock in the denim, and then I took a little piece of the pattern paper. Um, well, I didn't want to do that. Poke a hole in it and put the brad in, okay? Don't close your brad yet. You need that. All right, then you're going to take your pattern paper and on the back you're going to find the center point so you're going to mark from that corner to that corner and make an x on the back side and then you're going to do the opposite so corner to corner make an x in the middle and you should be able to see a point in the middle of the x that's your center okay so then you're going to go ahead and put your paper on here and poke a hole all right and then you're gonna put this bad boy through that hole right through the center just like that voila um, a lot of times what I will do is I will take a piece of score tape wherever I hid that for myself and um, just put a little line of score tape across the prongs Kind of help protect it a little bit, I guess, and keep it so it doesn't move around too much. So that is going to be the closure piece. And then we're going to take our art glitter glue again. And we're going to do a line. Take our score tape off. And then we're going to line this up on the front of our album. Squish it down. Okay. There we go. All right. So that is the closure 
of the book. And then you just grab this guy and there you have it. So wrap it around two or three times. And then I cut this way too long, but I'd rather have it too long than too short because you can always make it shorter. You can't make it longer. All right, and then there, there you go. That's your closure for the book. It keeps it nice and it's also expandable. So as your book opens and gets full, you still have room so that you can close it. And then one little thing I wanted to show you, little hint, um, when I was making these, I didn't have the right size, um, I didn't have the right size circles. I had a three quarter inch punch, but then I didn't have anything that was five eighths. And I didn't want a huge border of blue. I just wanted a little border of blue. So what I ended up doing was I saw one of my old border punches and I measured these holes and they are almost exactly five eighths of an inch. So I just use that to punch my inner hole. So um, shop your stash and see what you have because you might be able to improvise on your tools. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, so that is the basis of the book. And then all you basically have to do is cover everything inside with your pattern paper of choice. So again, when you open up the book, you have your passport expanding pocket and you have a tall pocket here and a full open sided pocket here. Place for pictures. You have pocket here and a pocket here. And again, on the other side, opposite each other. And then you have another place where you could put pictures. And then um, here's a nice envelope flap. And we're going to um, put a notebook in here or you could do receipts or whatever. And then um, you have a receipt pocket here. So all you have to do basically is cover it with your pattern papers of choice. And then you have your very own passport notebook. And again, um, this is a multifunctional book. You don't have to use it for passports, but the paper line was like super like screaming passport book to me. And, um, but if you use Christmas paper, it would make a great Christmas planner. Um, any, any type of planner you wanted to make, um, this would be a good catch-all for your purse, your pocket, book, your, <laughs> whatever you call it. It would be a great addition to your organization. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, please ask me any questions if you have any. And um, thanks for watching. Have a good, good, good day. And don't forget to go to Country Craft Creations and get your paper for this project. This is Let's Travel by Cartabella. And, and I use the Denim Artisan cardstock for this. All right. See you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.